Everybody doing? Great. Great. Everybody good? Can I? Laron? Y'all good? Great. Everybody over here straight? All right, so this is the second session that I've done. I did the first one this morning at 9 a.m. It's obviously titled, What's in Your Bag? So when we talk about what's in your bag, it's not just going to be focusing on finances. So finances will be a part of it. But we're going to be talking about my journey, the mistakes that I've made, things that I've learned about saving, about investing your money in yourself, um, and about what <coughs> led me to getting to that point, which was identifying what my God-given gift was. And I'm going to unapologetically speak about God. So I don't want to off offend anybody. <coughs> and if you feel otherwise or believe in anything other than that, Maybe you want to step out the room because I don't want to offend anybody. Everybody good? Yes, sir. Sir. Everybody believe, if you believe in God, just raise your hand real quick. Amen. Oh, we straight, man. Yes. All right, repeat after me. I am. I am. I will. I will. Be. Be. A life changer. A life changer. My mind. My mind. Will be changed. Will be changed. At the conclusion. At the conclusion. Of this session. Of this session. Now clap it up for yourself. Clap it up for yourself. All right, all right, we're going, listen, this is going to be very engaging. It's going to be very one-on-one. -on -one. I need y'all to talk to me. Don't get shy. Be real with me. I'm going to be completely real with y'all. Y'all feel me? All right. Okay, so when I ask you guys what's in your bag, we're going to go around the room, and I would like to get participation and engagement from everybody in the room. I want you guys to tell me what's in your bag. That's the question. What's in your bag? Just tell me what's in your bag. Do we have any brave volunteers? What'd you say? Notebook. You say notebook? I got I got a laptop. You got a laptop? Yeah. See? Yeah. About the same? Uh, a binder. A binder? Yeah. This like literally like my bag? Hey, all I said was what's in your bag. <laughs> I mean I didn't say what I mean and I have all my my uh, what's it called? My memory that like I tell me keep up my Uh, my family, my my career, my my uh, education, uh, my assets, uh, my plans, my dreams, mm -hmm. my hopes, my children, my grandchildren. I mean, everything about me is in my bag. Okay. All right. I like that. I got my wallet. <laughs> you said you got your wallet. Yeah. Okay. Cam, you already answered. Yeah, I you had a, a I had a yeah laptop. What'd you say? Yeah. Hey, can we clap it up for that? Can we? Oh, yeah. He said he got God in his bag. Amen. 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 Anything else? Can I? You said dreams, ambitions? All right. I struggle with my family. All right, now. Vision. Vision? Everything okay, if y'all notice, when I asked this question, obviously it was interpreted, you know, in a different way. Some people took it literal, like what's in my book bag, what's in my handbag. But when we're talking about what's in our bag, like I just said before I asked the question, not only is it referring to your finances, because that's kind of how we talk about it. That's the slang that we use now. When we say I'm getting to the bag, that means you're getting to the money. But what are you doing to get to the money? Because a lot of people in this world, you can make money, but are you fulfilled on that journey while you're making money? While you look at me right now, you are not looking at the richest man in the world or the richest young black guy that you know, but you're looking at somebody that's extremely fulfilled with the work that they do. And I'm explaining to you guys how I got to this point so that prayerfully, some of y'all, one of y'all, a couple of y'all in this room, can be fulfilled if you're not fulfilled doing what you're doing, making money and learning from my mistakes. So when I ask y'all what's in your bag, I don't just mean literally what's in your bag. I mean, I got some pencils, I got my MacBook. I mean, what, what do you have to offer? Mm -hmm. Who are you? What are you possessing? What gifts, what talents, what skills, what abilities, what knowledge? 
What desires, what are you possessing as you? Just think about that for a second. What are you possessing? And it could be something that you possess that you're sitting on, that you're not even using. It could be the gift of singing, the gift of marketing, the gift of building relationships, of listening. What's that gift? Think about it for a second. I'm gonna give you about 15 seconds. Yeah, about 15 seconds. You can start us off. What is your gift? I love identifying gifts. What is your gift, your God-given gift? Because everybody in this room has a God-given gift. Mm -hmm. Now, the next question is whether or not you're using it or not. So just think about it. All right, my brother, you want to start us off? <laughs> And speak loudly, confidently, so everybody in the room can hear y'all, please. Um, so I would say mine's probably creative writing. And I would say that possibly my God given gift because the times when I literally took that little and like just wrote freely about how, how I feel about something, mm -hmm. it had a positive, I would say positive impact, but like the result was mm -hmm. great. I expected the <coughs> prime example being high school, I got a poem I wrote published in a literary magazine. Mm -hmm. And mind you, people like, if you know me, like, you know, my boys follow me, you would think I write poems for it. You would think I'm just some guy who just write jokes or whatnot. But, you know, my poem got published in a literary magazine, mm -hmm. so I didn't expect that I'd be saying it in English or whatnot. So, yeah. And then, on the flip side of that, like, using it. And every now and then, if I'm, like, deep in my feels, I'll, like, write something in my notes real quick. Mm -hmm. But more times than not, really, uh, I'm just going to cry. So I'm not really utilizing it. What's your name? James. So whenever I work with different groups, every time somebody answers, which is going to get repetitive, but I love it, we're going to clap it up. So can we clap it up for James, please? Please, 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 please. Somebody else, talk to me, talk to me. Um, yes, sir. I would say uh, my God-given gift is, uh, I have a lot, but I would say I'm a big influencer, and I would say I'm a, uh, I'm a connector. Like, I feel like I know how to connect with God, like middle man, like the point of people. Let me tell you a little backstory. So I've been knowing this dude since we was like, probably like middle school. We used to just go to the mall in Columbus, Ohio, in Easton. We ain't had no bread. We just go around, look at women, and you know, talk about girls, play basketball and stuff. But this dude literally was able to connect the dots with everybody. He just one of those guys who everybody know. We'd be walking through Foot Locker, and then some 60-year-old man, LeBron, and he like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, how does he know this dude? Brother, we in the seventh grade just playing back. You know what I mean? Just one of those people that knows everybody. That's always been a fresh dude. Like you said, he is an influencer. Clap it up for LeBron, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? God giving gifts, talents. Yes, ma'am. I feel like I have a gift of compassion mm -hmm. because let's say like when I feel about certain things, I feel a strong way. Mm -hmm. And even though I may not have the means to do everything, that compassion can take you very far. Okay. What's your name again? My name is Kayla. Kayla, that's what I thought. Clap it up for Kayla, please. <laughs> Anybody else before we move on? Yes, sir. I think my God gives a gift to help others. Is to help others? To be a rock to listen to. Um, outside of working at A&C, uh, I'm, I'm a volunteer EMS. Mm -hmm. I try to help people any way I can. What's your name? Ricky. Clap it up for Ricky. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, in the back. assist students in other ways because especially those that come from out of state <coughs> and being that kind of mom figure and listening to their needs outside of whether it's financial aid or helping with a bill. Yep. Miss Tammy, right? Mm-hmm. Clap it up. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else, your God given gift, your talent, something that you possess naturally. Talk to me, ladies, yes. I, I was gonna say it's <laughs> not even a gift of help, but I think my true gift is
Okay, so that's a simple exercise, identifying your gifts, right? And I said step number two is to actually figure out if we are applying those gifts. So we're going, there's four different sections in this. There is the way, the why, the mistakes, and the answers. The way, the why, the mistakes, and the answers. If you can, take notes, mental notes, put it in your iPhone, do what you can. Because I'm gonna feed you a lot of information. And even if you just take one nugget, one thing that stands out to you that can change your life, just take it with you. Y'all feel me? If y'all feel me, say I feel you, bro. Yeah. Say I feel you, bro, bro. Yeah. All right. So we are starting with the way, I mean the why. By the way, this is scripture based. For anybody who just walked in, I don't want to offend you, but I'll be talking about God, Christ, faith, and all that unapologetically, all right? We good? Okay. So the why, obviously, we have Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16. It says, a man's gifts opens doors and brings him in front of great men. All right? A man's gifts open doors and bring him in front of great men. Simply put, your gift will make room. That's the simplified version of that scripture. Your gift will make room. What we have to realize is that this is step one to opening that door of finances. Now, like I said before, I'm not standing in front of y'all as some millionaire. I'm on my way. I'm not standing in front of y'all as somebody who has tons of money. But I have found that my God-given gift and living in that gift has opened doors that has allowed me to make a lot more money than my friends and just be in influential positions to spread God's glory. And it all starts with your gift. That's why I just had y'all identify your gift. Because if it's something that we want to make a career out of, we have to start there. And it's not enough just to sit on it or just to talk about it, but are you actually living in it? Are you actually acting on it? Or is it just a conversation? Is it just a social media post? Is it just a tweet? Or are you actually living this gift? Because whether you believe it or not, each and every one of us in this room, no matter how old, how young, what you've been through, we're all created with a gift that God gave you at birth. So you have to identify what that gift is. And once you do, doors will begin to open. I'm gonna give y'all my backstory so that y'all know how I got into this speaking and working with different groups. So, 2013, I went to Northland High School, my first two years in Columbus, Ohio, Northland High School, and I transferred to Eastmore Academy. I already knew Cam, I already knew LeBron, and I met Teeth. We all played ball together and stuff at uh, Eastmore Academy. 2013, I'm walking into the classroom. I get good grades, right? But I'm a goofball, goofy kid. I'm walking into the classroom. Probably like flirting with Courtney, young for Courtney. You know, I was stuck on her for years. Probably flirting with Courtney or something, messing with her. I'm walking into the classroom, and then the teacher, Miss Waddell, who is my mentor and spiritual mother to this day, she stopped me. She said, let me holler at you real quick. I said, what's up? Now, granted, I had a basketball tattooed on my arm with my initials right here, because I thought I was going to the NBA. And I was like, what's going on? She said, young man, I want you to realize something. She said, when you walk into a room, do you understand you demand attention, right? You're able to be in front of people naturally. And I'm like, are you tripping? Like, I don't know what you're talking about, but you're tripping, right? I had the basketball tattooed on my arm. Metaphorically, it was tattooed in my mind because I thought I was going to the NBA. Fast forward to 2014, I'm a senior in high school, okay? Now, we have something called the senior breakfast. 
I was forced to speak along with Quay, who graduated with me at the senior breakfast. I didn't want to do it, but my mentor, who saw something in me, she said, you know what, Nate? You're going to do it. I was like, oh my gosh, Miss Waddell, do I have to? She said, you're going to do it. So I'm behind the podium. I'm speaking about my journey, transferring into Eastmore, not being able to play, winning a district championship, the whole journey. And I just saw the power that your voice could have, right? The impact you could have if you really believe in the words that you're saying and how it could influence other people. So I was like, whoa, this is kind of cool. And I was kind of good at it for it being like my first time doing it. So that's 2014, y'all still with me? I know I'm talking a lot, y'all still with me? Okay, that's 2014. So I was watching like Les Brown, if you know who Les Brown is, raise your hand please. Motivational speaker, super well known. I would watch him all the time, right? So I started volunteering in my community while I was at Capital University, which is a college in Columbus, Ohio. It's a PWI. I didn't want to go there, but because my parents said, Nate, they're recruiting you to play ball, you're going to go there. My dream was to go to like A&T or Morehouse or something, big HBCU. So I'm at Capital my freshman year, and I fall into a depression. Now, in order for me to get myself out of that depression, I said, what can I do that's going to fulfill me? So I began volunteering all in the community, rec centers, schools, elementaries, just helping the youth, just giving them a positive word, things that I was taking in through watching those speeches. Let me show you how God works. So I go to my family one day and I say, you know what, mom, I've been watching this dude named Les Brown. Have you ever heard of him? She said, Les Brown? She said, he used to live with your grandmother when he lived here. And I said, no way. Are we talking about the same guy? She said, him and your grandmother are like this. He used to live with her when he lived here in Columbus, Ohio for a few years. I said, okay, God, you messing with me. Because at the same time, I was getting closer to God through my mentor. I said, you messing with me because you can't make this stuff up. So I began speaking more and more and more in the community. And remember I told y'all, your gift will make room, right? Your gift opens up doors and places you in front of great men. So I began speaking and speaking and speaking. But I really, really wasn't truly fulfilled because I hadn't went to my HBCU yet. Remember, I told you I wanted to go to the HBCU. Y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. This is 2016. I went from Capitol for a year to Columbus State Community College for a semester. That second semester, I said, I'm going to join the homies, Cam and Leron, down here in Greensboro. So I took a leap of faith and I came. While I was down here in 2016, which was spring semester of 2016, I enjoyed it, but I was not truly fulfilled until I could get off the campus and do my work in the community. So I was working with schools in the community, you know, mentoring, doing all kinds of stuff, but I would get back on the campus and I felt empty on the inside. And they can tell you, I didn't used to do nothing but stay in my room. And they, you know what I mean? And that's not normal, really. So, oh, I'm talking a lot. Y'all still with me? Okay. I feel like I'm bored. Y'all bored? No. Uh, we're listening. We're okay. listening, man. All right. I'm, okay. Good. So 2016, and I'm not fulfilled unless I can get off the campus, right? April 9th, 2016 changed my life forever. Saturday, I was calling my father. Wish I had a phone. I act like this my phone. It's a little small iPhone. Calling my dad. No answer. Calling him. No answer. Calling him. No answer. So I called his nurse. Now let me tell you, my dad was a diabetic, cancer survivor, kidney issues, his health was bad. Something told me, Nate, you need to call his nurse to check on him. So I said, Sheena, can you go to my dad's house to check on him? Cause I can't get in touch with him. And I waited and I waited and then I, my phone was ringing. I pick up the phone. Before she could say a word, she was crying. And I knew at that point, she said, Nathan, I'm sorry. Your dad's dead. I just found him. I threw the phone down and I dropped on my knees and I broke down into tears. Thank God I had my sweet mates, my roommates, people who loved me to comfort me throughout the process. That was a wake up call to me because I knew while I was down here, I wasn't fulfilled and I was living for my parents and my parents didn't get a chance to see me live for myself. Right? I felt bad because my dad didn't truly get to see me in that prime form. So I said, you know what, Nate? You need to go home, do the work that God wants you to do. So I said, you know what, Auntie? I love you, but my time here is up. And that's another thing. Sometimes we gotta know when our time in a certain area mm -hmm. is up. My time here was up. 
So I went back home to Columbus, Ohio. This is 2016. This is the, because I was here for a year. So I dropped out after that, went home. And that's when I've just been doing the business. I've been speaking, colleges, scholarship organizations, schools, all kind of stuff. So that is the why, right? That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Just so that you guys know. Now, I told y'all my story, not to impress you, but to wake something up in your mind. If you haven't done this yet, or if you're struggling with this, you need to figure out what your why is for doing what you do. You need to figure out why you're doing the work that you're doing or why you're not doing the work that you're supposed to be doing. Because if you remember, I told you all I started in 2014, right? I was depressed, broke, no food to eat sometimes, going from school to school, transferring. Throughout that whole process, I still knew the why, right? So if you can identify what your why is, that will help you a great deal as you begin to transform, to grow, to elevate as life progresses. Repeat after me. I need to. I need to. Identify. Identify. My why. My why. My gift. My gift. Will open doors. Will open doors. doors. Do I believe that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's keep it going. So we talked about the why. Now we're going to talk about the way. And I told y'all this is scripture based. I'm not a preacher, but I believe in God wholeheartedly. So I'm going to tell y'all <coughs> what I've experienced. This is the way. We're going to pull from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. <coughs> trust in the Lord with, y'all can't really see this, but trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding, but in all ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. And then I'll explain <coughs> to you guys my path a little bit more in, in more detail. But this is what it is, y'all. For all of us who raised our hands and who said that we believe in God, if we truly, 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 truly trust in his path and in his process for our lives, things will work out. And I'm going to go into detail about how my finances are fluctuated. I made $12,000, but the business grossed almost $20,000, and I lost it all, spent it all. But if we continue to trust God, everything can turn over. Like the beginning of this school year, I signed a contract worth more than half of what I made last, last year. And this is just one school. This is just one contract, right? So it shows you what trusting God can get you. And I'm not trying to preach to y'all, but I'm just keeping it real with you. This is what I know, because I've seen God work in my life and I want him to work in y'all's life. So we talked about the why and absolutely trusting God is the way. If you need to open your Bible up, if you need to download the Holy Bible app, if you need to go to YouTube, listen to a sermon, that is the way, folks. Amen. That's the way. And more young people and just people in general, we gotta talk about this stuff. I'm getting a little bit off topic right now, but I'm being real with y'all. We got to talk about this stuff, especially on these college campuses and in the communities because we're under attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called spiritual warfare. Yeah. You got social media, people killing people, people killing babies. It's crazy. Crazy. Okay. So we're going to start here. These are some things that I've learned. They're very simple. This is not going to be some super mind-boggling, complex presentation that I'm going to go over. I'm going to give you all very simple things that I've learned and applied to my life that have worked. So hopefully, if y'all want to take them with y'all, y'all can do so. You got a dollar on you? Raise your hand if you got a dollar. She like, for what? <laughs> okay, so. Hey, come on, clicker. Invest a dollar to a gold journal, please. Go to Dollar Tree. Y'all know what Dollar Tree is? Yeah. Go to Dollar Tree. Spend a dollar and five cents, whatever it is. Spend a dollar. Buy a journal. I think I showed the first group this. It's called a gold journal, okay? A gold journal. If we're going to identify our God-given gift, right? That's step one. If we're going to identify that, 
and then put a plan to action together to deliver it to the world, you have to set goals. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, setting goals gives you direction and achieving them gives you confidence. You have to set goals. It's only a dollar. Just get a journal, invest in it. On the front of mine, if y'all want to adopt this, you can. I have a purpose statement. What's your purpose? What is your purpose? Because this is what happens when you identify your gift, that explains what your purpose is going to be. But you got to identify your gift first. That'll lead you to your purpose. So let me read something for y'all. This was started in uh, April 11th, 2019. Uh, you know, once you fill up one, you got to buy another one. So purpose statement, God created me to change the lives of other people. I wholeheartedly believe God gave me the gift of speaking and inspiring so that I can spread his glory. People will be happier, more motivated, excited, liberated, and confident because we came in contact. My family will be one of the main groups who reap the benefits from my efforts. My legacy will be to create platforms, businesses, organizations, so that I can spread the importance of ownership to all communities, especially African Americans. God will lead me. Y'all like that? Yeah. Clap it up for that. Can I get a hand clap or something? Yeah. I thought that was nice. Yeah. So that's just something that gives you kind of like a direction or like a vision for what you're going to go toward. So if I was y'all, just put a dollar to a gold journal, please. Mm -hmm. I know we've all done vision boards, but what this does is it gives you a daily plan of action, and this thing is crazy. It gives you a daily plan of action of how you're going to achieve things. Because if you look at it every single day, you're like, okay, I need to stop by this school. Okay, I need to read this book. I need to do this assignment. You will begin to check off everything in there, and that builds your confidence. Start small, work your way up big. So invest the buck, please. Now, use your nine to five to find your vision. This is very, very simple, very obvious. If you've worked a nine to five or have a nine to five, raise your hand, please. Some of us. If you have dreams of owning a business or having a product or a service that you just deliver to the world, raise your hand, please. We have any business owners in here right now? Okay, so future business owners, right? So this is something I had to learn. It was a very rough journey for me to getting to the point in my life where I don't have like a structured schedule where I can wake up in the morning and make my own schedule and still get my bills paid. This was crazy, this nine to five thing, and I'll talk about that journey next. But you gotta keep the lights on, right? You gotta get your basic necessities. You have to pay for basic things, okay? But use that money depending on how much you're making to invest into your business. And I'll break some more stuff down within the next couple of slides that'll kind of break that down even more. Um, open a business savings account, which gives you more liquidity, which means you can pull from it easily. So if you have business expenses, you need to invest in yourself, you need some business cards, you need to travel, you need a new suit, you need a new outfit, you need some hair wig. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Yeah. Manicure whatever, right? <laughs> business account. The thing about this business account though, and this is where I messed up, I didn't have no discipline. So I had all my money in one business account, and even though I changed the name of the account to Don't Touch, I touched that thing. <laughs> I touched that thing like crazy. I just hopped on the app, transfer money, transfer money, transfer money, go buy this, go buy this, go buy this coat, go buy these shoes. And before I knew it, I was completely broke. So the thing about this business account is it so easily accessible? If you don't have any discipline, you're gonna go broke. But, y'all know what a CD account is? Certificate of deposit. So, I'll explain it. So, I don't have it on this screen, but it's within like the next couple of other screens. Basically, it's a savings account. Say I put $500 in there. It'll have a higher interest rate because there's a penalty if you touch it. So, say I wanna save bread for two years. They may have a two year, um, you know, cycle. Two years, you can't touch this money. But the interest is higher on them, typically because you can't touch the money and you're making money while it's sitting in that account. The only thing with that is if you do need to pull some money out, it's gonna be a penalty, right? So it's not as accessible as just like a regular business savings account, but it does stop you from 
just pulling, just pulling, just pulling. So I recommend probably having both so that you can build a little money up while you are building your savings as well. If you're able to discipline yourself that way, that's what I do. When we talk about investing in ourselves, this is something that's not talked about enough either. Investing in your health. You need to have a fitness routine. You need to eat healthy. You need to be able to walk up three flights of steps without getting tired. And I'm just being real. I'm being real. Well, I get tired too sometimes walking up steps, but y'all know what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. We gotta figure out a way in the African American community as minorities to take care of our health. Because culturally, we're programmed to believe all the fried foods, all the mac and cheese, no exercise will never hurt us. And then we come 40, 50, 60, we start to develop heart diseases, high cholesterol, and then that cycle continues. Yes, sir. Honestly, I really don't think that's our fault. I think the problem is what we're surrounded by. If you're surrounded by a lot of restaurants that give you fast food and you don't have a whole lot of money, then what are you supposed to do? You can still break the cycle. I broke in the cycle. I grew up in an area where it was fast food everywhere. I think it's a mentality. Like you can accept it. Cause I'll give you an example. I told you my father had bad health, right? And I always said it was a gift and a curse because obviously he couldn't be there with me at all my games. Cause my dad was always sick. I had to take care of him, had to give him his pills. But I learned from him. I saw this man literally dying in the house. And I made a decision to, for myself. I said, whoa, this is not how I want to live my life. Because he was an alcoholic, he was a drug addict, he ate the kind of food that he did not need to eat towards the end of his life. It did not help him live longer. So I feel like we, we have a decision that we can make once we see the impacts of it, because we ain't stupid. We know what happens when you eat unhealthy and don't work out. Typically, it affects your health negatively. Right, you can have that mentality, but we live in a fast-paced society, so people don't really have time to work out. You make time for the things you want to get done, bro. I just believe that. You can fit in routine. That don't mean like you gotta like act like a whole like going to the gym and the whole workout. It can just be like little things up your health. Like for me, I pick only unless it's raining. I walk it on the class. I got it off every. And it's like it's not a far walk, but it gives you like it also gives you short. If that makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, something's better than nothing. I mean, I ain't saying like mm -hmm. turn into like a <laughs> like a health coach, like a personal yeah. trainer, but yeah. there are small things that we can do to definitely break the cycle. Like, I don't know. I just believe that we can do it if we put our mind to it. Get a side hustle. Um, I'll go ahead and jump to the next slide because it, it starts with that. So this is just a timeline of different jobs that I have worked while I was creating a life where I could kind of make my own schedule, make money doing what I love to do. So when I was here in 2016, y'all see this eBay logo on the top left? Yeah, top left. This eBay logo, while I was here, I didn't want to work on campus. I didn't want to work like a regular job while I was, you know, getting out into the community doing stuff. So what I did was I would go to local thrift stores because my mom was a business owner growing up. So I knew how to have an eye for things that had value, but were so cheap at like thrift stores and stuff. So I would go to different thrift stores. I would buy dolls, cars, clothes, shoes, all kind of stuff. Look up the value for it. Look at the condition of it. And I would sell it. I would flip it on like eBay, Amazon. And you can make pretty good money doing it, depending on how consistently and how much energy you put towards it. But it allowed me to have some freedom and some flexibility while building my dream of this whole speaking thing. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Y'all sure? Yes, sir. I'm not boring y'all, am I? No. Okay, AMC. So, when I dropped out, this is 2016, when I went back home, uh, my mom kicked me out. She said, boy, you can make your own decisions, you can pay your own bill. She said, if you're not gonna be in school, you cannot live here anymore. You gotta get out of my house. So, I had to live and take care of my grandmother who has dementia. So when I was living with my grandmother, I was working at the movie theaters, okay? Now this movie theater job didn't pay your boy anything. I was getting paid like four or five bucks an hour plus tips, wasn't nothing. I was broke. Um, this job was just something I was doing just to do. You know, I had dropped out of school, just something to take up time. Let me explain you how I got fired from this job. 
kind of a funny story. It's supposed to work, right? 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 Mm -hmm. right. I'm supposed to be clocked in, okay? I called him, I said, <coughs> Okay, well, blah, 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 blah. I come walking in with this girl. We walking in the east, and this is a mall in Columbus, Ohio. We walk in. I'm like, yeah, I get free tickets because I work here at the movie theater. I got you. I tell them, I said, can y'all go get the manager? Because I work here so we can get our free tickets. They said, okay, cool. Now, granted, I'm supposed to be clocked in cleaning theaters, okay? I don't know what I was thinking. I thought it would work. I said, hold on real quick. So they go and get the manager. She said, Nate, what you doing? You supposed to be clocked in right now. I said, this is my cousin from out of town. We just spending some time together. Can we please just see a movie? It's my cousin. They said, Nate, we can't give you a free movie while you're supposed to be clocked in. Get out of here. Long story short, had to pay for the movie, you know, took grand, whatever. Now, next day I go in to work. I'm all dressed up. I'm like, I'm about to go clean some theaters or whatever. They said, Nate, can we talk to you? <laughs> oh, my God, Lord. The So I go into the office and I get fired. But y'all, can I, on a side note, do y'all do know what the self-fulfilling prophecy is? Anybody know what that is? The self-fulfilling prophecy? Self-fulfilling prophecy. I've heard of it. Let me just break it down to you. Because I, I just thought about it because that's what I did in that situation. Sometimes people can tell us something. So say I'm in the third grade, right? And my teacher tells me all the time, you're never going to be anything but a crook. You're going to be a criminal. She tells me that so much that it gets programmed into my mind mm -hmm. that subconsciously my actions make it a reality. So I don't know what's happening, but I've heard it so much that I just act out in ways to make it a reality. So I remember I did that came to my mind because I had been complaining about the job so much that, you know, at some point we just do stuff to self-sabotage ourselves. I didn't care. I went to my homie's house afterwards and just clowned with him. But that's what happened at Easton. This is a team mentoring program. Hated it. Ended up quitting. If you haven't noticed, I've been fired or quit from quite a bit of jobs. Planet Fitness was making no money. This, I was living on my own by this point. I literally would have to go to like food pantries to get food like every other week because I just didn't have enough money in my life. But I was still pursuing my vision, still investing in myself, still speaking and stuff. Forever 21, I worked there. Guess what I did? Can anybody guess? Hey, you got fired. Huh? It's a Q word. Huh? Say it louder. Quit. Louder. Quit. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up quitting. I didn't like it. I can't work retail. Yeah. Uh, you feel me? Clock, clock in, clock in at three. Can't leave until you don't leave when the store closes. No, no. You leave until the store is clean. clean. You picking up hangers. I, I can't do it. So we got eBay, AMC, all that. Planet Fitness, Forever Twenty One. It's a couple more. I'm not going to mention in there. And this small little circle right here says faith and failure. Because throughout this entire journey, it took faith and failure. It took being broke. It took having ups and downs. It took working odd jobs. But constantly using the little bit of bread I was making from each of those to invest in my brand, which, you know, is very, very difficult when you're building something from the ground up. But when it's something that you believe in, and this is what happens in life, if it's something that you believe in so much and you keep pounding the pavement, people will start to believe in you because they see, okay, this dude or this girl, she's super, super serious. She's super passionate about it. And by the way, I only got here today because I was just sending out footage on my gram to different HBCUs and NCAT saw it. I was like, hey, do you want to come do this conference? I had told my homies this year, I'm going to do a conference at Clark. I already done it and I'm going to do one at a and and I'm doing it, right? So that shows you the power of belief and having faith. Y'all feel that? Okay. Now, can everybody stand up for me? Just stand up. I just want you to stretch a second. I know I'm talking a lot. Put your right arm up. Somebody put that left. I ain't gonna say who. I ain't gonna say who. Put your left arm up. Put both arms up, put them down, put your right leg up, put your left leg up, put both legs up. Shake it all about. Shake it all out. Okay, take a seat. I just need y'all to get a little loose, get a little loose. I should say do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. 
Where are we at on time? Where are we at on time? It's 1240, 246. Okay. So, last school year, um, I made the most money I have made in my entire life. After paying my manager what I owed him, because when you have a manager, you have an agreement, a contract, your manager or agent or whatever gets a cut of whatever you get booked for, whatever engagements you do. So I had 12,000 in my account, ended up with zero dollars at the beginning of this school year. So let me explain to you some mistakes that I made to hopefully you guys avoid making them. And I talked about this in the first group. Number one, if you're gonna empower somebody to be in a position who's gonna work for you or work with you, make sure that that person is knowledgeable and able to do the work. And even further than that, make sure they're all in on doing the work. Because I can have somebody working for me, and if you really, really believe in the job that you're doing, I can work with you. But if it's kind of just like, eh, I do it in my spare time, I still got a whole life of my own, it's not gonna work. So make sure when y'all begin to hire people or you begin to work with people or partner with people, it's somebody who's knowledgeable and who's hungry and who truly, truly believes in what y'all are doing. Number two, when you begin to make a lot of money, like how I was making it, sometimes you make money and money will take you to a place where your maturity and your character is just not ready for. And so I was talking about this analogy earlier. Say all of us in this room, or say everybody in the world wiped out their money. We all had zero. Nobody had any money. Do y'all understand that just because of certain people's mindsets, the money will still end up in the hands of those people with that wealth mindset? And the people with a poverty mindset would end up broke again? Because a lot of this comes down to your mind. A lot of stuff is systematic. Discrimination and stuff goes into that as well. But a lot of this is a mindset. And it's what you feed your mind. And it's the knowledge that you take in. So for me, before I was able to, when I got this money, I had no type of knowledge on budgeting, on financial plans, on savings, on investing, on interest rates, none of it. Your boy just got some money and spent it all. So, and I'm not telling y'all I'm like a financial guru and I'm super, super good with numbers and stuff like that. I'm not gonna take her a lot of you. So take some time on y'all's own and do y'all's own things to figure out a budget plan that works for you while investing in yourself. Y'all feel me? Mm -hmm. All right. Oof. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. I didn't pull the whole thing. I just did verse one because it's a lot in there. It says, for everything, there's a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. And I pulled this because I want us to understand in business, when you have a product or a service or something that you're delivering, there will be ups, there will be downs. There will be ups, there will be downs. There will be times when you have money, times when you're flat broke, especially when you're investing in yourself which is what this whole thing is about. Especially when you invest in yourself. I can't tell y'all the amount of times that my account has came out negative or close to it because I had to choose between, uh, should I start paying this back? Should I pay for this? Or should I pay for these business cards? Or should I pay for this flight? Or should I pay for this rental car? Or should I go get this suit? And those are tough decisions that you have to make if you truly want to do this business thing, if you truly want to build your brand, and it's a never ending process. Y'all know who Dame Dash is? Mm -hmm. yeah. I was listening to a Dame Dash interview and he was like, I never have money because I'm always pulling my money and dumping it into my business. It's like, you're going to profit, but you're constantly putting money in because he doesn't like having people loan him money, right? So it's a constant cycle of, I got my business account, I got to invest in this. I got some money, got to invest in this. But with that comes ups and downs. And I told the group this earlier, when you're building the kingdom of God, along with helping other people, those two things, when you're building the kingdom 
And when you're helping other people, you're going to be under attack spiritually. The attacks will increase. Things will become more difficult because the enemy don't want to see you do no good. The enemy doesn't want to see you do any good. So the attacks will increase. And this is what the enemy does. He will send you exactly what you like. The same height, the same shape, the same skin color. He gonna send you what you want in the form that you like. Shorty smelling good, she walked by you smelling good. The hair curly like you like it, you like, oh, okay. But you got a girl. So these attacks come the more good that you're doing. Why would the enemy want to attack somebody who ain't doing nothing? It's not going to happen. It's those people who are deliberately, like I just said, helping other people and building the kingdom. Repeat after me, the attacks, the attacks will, come. will come. But with God, but with God we, will prevail. we will prevail. Do y'all believe that? Yeah. Okay. We're almost done. Stay with me, y'all, okay? Y'all not falling asleep, but are y'all? Almost. Yes, sir. So for me, a lot of the mistakes came from not having a budget plan at all. So find a plan that works for you. Each of our finances and how much money we're taking in is different. So find a plan that works for you. One of the things I would do every time I would get paid from like my nine to five, I would just, and this may not work for everybody, I would just cut it in half because my bills weren't too much. I would cut it in half and use the little I could to invest in the business and in everything else. I would pay for what I had to pay for, which often left me with nothing at the end of the day. But just find a plan that works best for you. Um, like I said before, the business savings account that I had when I had the 12 bands was too accessible, which for me, I know me, I can't have a lump sum of money sitting here and not touch it. So that's why the CD account, certificate of deposit, I said may be a good idea for some of us because you'll be able to build money while it's in there and it's not as easily accessible. You can't just pull from it, there will be a penalty. And the interest on those are typically higher, okay? Because the money isn't being touched and I believe it's more valuable to the banks and to the credit unions. Um, my business has slowed down. So throughout this whole process, I was working a lot with schools. And then as I transitioned into spring and summer, I wasn't really doing as much work. So from that, my expenses exceeded my income. The amount of money I was taking in was not more than the amount of money I was dishing out. And this last one is very, very, very important. I did not have disciplined spenders around me. And Malcolm, when he was speaking, um, hit it on the head about the importance of the people that you surround yourself with. The people around me were very, very, very frivolous and they were not disciplined when it came to spending. And so just by being around them and not having somebody to say, yo, you're making a mistake. You might want to tone it down a little bit. My spending increased. My bank account did what? Decreased. Decreased. <clears throat> now, we talked about the mistakes that I made. So this is towards the end, and this is going to be called the answer. And like I said, it's very, very practical things that we can apply to our lives, people. The three Ds. What's this first word right here? Discipline. The second one? Discernment. Last one? Destiny. Now, once we have identified our gift, if we have discipline and if we have discernment, we can set ourselves up for our destiny. And if you notice, under each of those, I have different things that we can do. We have open a CD account, we have the business savings account, get a budget plan and be disciplined with your money. The discernment which is like a spiritual gift of knowing what to do, of being able to judge certain situations and certain people, which is something that I've grown with over the years, and probably a lot of us in here have grown with it as well. Knowing who we need to keep around us, 
because just because I've known you for 10 years or 15 years don't mean I need to hang around you every day, bro. Because our history has nothing to do with our future. Our history has nothing to do with our future. Because based on the words that you speak, and I'm speaking from experience with one of my homies, based on the words that you speak and how serious you are about your life, if I'm around you, that's gonna rub off on me. And God got too much for me to do to be around you. And I believe it's the five people who you hang around, you'll become like the average of those five people. That's just like law, it's just human nature. Just from hanging around those five people all the time. The words that they speak, the things that they do, you become that, whether you like it or not. Relationships, when I had got some money in my pocket, I was acting a fool. And I'm gonna be completely transparent and authentic with y'all. I was acting a fool. When it comes to women, relationships, I almost had a kid. But once you get something that you're not mentally ready for, it opens the door for the enemy to creep in and say, oh yeah, I got it now. I'm gonna send you this girl, I'm gonna send you this. And then that's when you screw up. So discernment with friends, with relationships and business opportunities. This is also very, very important. Every opportunity, just cause you're getting paid or even if you're not getting paid, doesn't mean it's a good opportunity does not mean it's a good opportunity. If it's not divine, repeat after me, if it's not divine, if it's not divine, if it's not divine, if it's not divine, do not take the opportunity. Do not take it. Just because you're getting a check does not always mean that it's a good opportunity. Learn how to distinguish something that's God sent and something that's just sent to throw me off or to make my life harder. Discernment with your friends, with relationships, with business opportunities, your destiny, which is probably the most important piece up here. Not probably, it is. Where you're going, God's purpose for your life, identify your gift. You have to, you have to identify your God-given gift. That will lead to your destiny. That will help you understand where you're going. Because we can't talk about finances and being fulfilled and being disciplined if we're not doing those things and being fulfilled. And the only way you can be fulfilled is if you identify the gift and you're operating in it. Because I would be doing y'all a disservice if I got up here and I talked about finances and gave y'all a plan and talked about percentages and interest rates and all kind of stuff like that. But didn't talk about how to be fulfilled while doing so. Don't y'all want to be fulfilled? Because if I'm fulfilled, I'm gonna share with y'all how I became fulfilled. So these things are all equally important. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. If you with me, say Chick-fil-A. Chick -fil -A. Chick -fil -A. If you with me, say four for four. four, for four. If you with me, say Chipotle. Chipotle. Okay. Income. Y'all know who Jim Rowan is? Jim Rowan, speaker, motivational speaker, author. He said income, dang. he said income does not far exceed personal development, okay? Income does not far exceed personal development. What that means is the more you work on yourself, the more books you read, the more seminars you attend, the more you invest in yourself, you increase your value, the higher your income goes. So for those of you who wanna own a business, those of you who have a product or a service you wanna to deliver to the world, you have to invest in it. You have to invest in yourself. If y'all came into my room right now, y'all would probably think I'm a nutcase based on how many books and things that I read and things that I write down. But where you spend your money at, what you spend your money on, you can probably predict where somebody's gonna end up based on the things that they spend their money on. You probably could. You probably could. Because the higher your value becomes, and I've seen it over the past couple years, the higher my value becomes, the more people are going to pay me to do what I love to do. And you're probably crazy if you don't want to get paid to do what you love to do. Flat out. Income does not far exceed personal development. 
You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And this one, oh, this is huge. Can somebody read this? Anybody? This last one? <clears throat> According to research by social psychologist Dr. David McClellan of Harvard, friends determine as much as 95% of your success or failure in life. Can y'all believe that? As much as 95% of your success or failure, friends. And this is the people that you talk to and hang out with and go to the movies with and go shopping with and have conversations with and FaceTime with. 95% of your success or failure. I would be doing you all a disservice like I said, if I did not talk about these things along with finances, because all of this is equally important, because you can't have good finances and a good plan if you've got whack people surrounding you. If you've got people who aren't doing anything, people who blow their money all the time, people who aren't building God, people who are living in the world making mistakes all the time. Ninety-five percent. Everybody say ninety-five percent. Ninety-five. Say ninety-five percent. Ninety-five percent. Depends on the people that you hang around with. Well, I was just ninety-five percent, bro. See, one of my closest friends, and this is my dog. We went to high school together. We played ball together. And Cam and Laurent probably know I'm talking about Teeth too. One of my dogs, right? We graduated together, and we were going to play high, uh, college ball together. And you know, we was getting it in, lifting, working out. But I had to keep dragging this dude. I'm like, bro, if you want to get to the next level and, and be productive, we got to put in work. And one day, this dude, he looked at me, and he was like, why are you so serious about life? And at that point, I knew. I said, even though I love you, I got to separate myself from you. Because if I keep hanging around you, Without me even knowing it, I'm gonna start talking like you, acting like you, and you just gonna become dead weight. And at that point, I'm gonna become resentful, which is gonna affect our friendship. So we gotta have the awareness to know that even though I've been knowing you for the past 16 years and I love you, I know your auntie, I know your sister, I know Pookie, I know Dede, I know all your family. Fam, thank you, but our time is up. And it's just that simple. Talk to me. Uh, how can you discern like between when it's when like they're pulling you back or like as opposed to like you bringing them up like when how can you tell mm, good question which one you should you should continue? he said how can you tell when somebody's like holding you back and you're just pulling them up I'm saying like how like you said with that friend like you could have as easily explained why you were so serious about life and then kind of like help be an influence to him as opposed mm -hmm. to him being an influence to you. So I was just saying, like, how do you discern, like, make that decision for yourself? Like, should I keep going or should I just, you know, let it be I think it when, I, when I get to a point where I feel like my mental health and my, yes, and I'm being drained too much and it's a one-sided relationship, mm -hmm. at that point, I'm like, okay, you're affecting me even when I'm not around you, right? So even in my spare time, or through our text or through a phone call, even when I'm not with you, you're affecting me, I gotta keep it moving. And if I feel like you're not feeding me, cause you, we should be, if we're homies, you should be feeding me and I should be feeding you. Hey, come on now, we in church, come on now. <laughs> May the church say amen. amen. Woo!